It's on my site. Oh, it's on yours. Because I don't have the way to get in. Okay. I, well, okay. Uh, unless you want to change that. No, no. Well, I copied the uh, URL. So you weren't able to get into the. No, because I don't have that matching number. Okay. However, I could. I could I have time now to do it. I'm going to do two things. Okay. The microphone and that, that man. It's okay. <laughs> But rather than emailing it to me, I, I can pull it right off. Oh, yeah, of course you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm open to uh, edit right now. Oh, is it there? URL. Is it there? URL is URL right there. What's the other one? Uh, it's right there. So, how do you edit there? Uh, well, I, well, I, can, I can edit there for you. <laughs> so, are you okay with that? Sure. Because it's URL. Yeah, uh, uh, rather, rather than go through the song and dance of your getting it live on, on YouTube, on the balancing of each other, no one's going to use anything, right? Unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I know, I know. You know somebody's announced it on the YouTube channel, but they also announced it on the website, so if they don't see it on YouTube, I hope they'll announce it on the website. You have a little breathing time. Yeah, we love it. Where is your uh, mic up? microphone? The microphone should be right over there. I'm going to slide you through this way. On that? Nothing. Oh, jeez. In the bay? Nope. Try not to be there again. It's not in the bag, it's not going to be anywhere, Jane. So. I used my site when I tested. I didn't use it. I didn't use it. Oh, shit. <coughs> so I have to use my site. So 
sorry. No worries. Uh, I couldn't get that working originally, so I would have. Anyway. Share to um, if you just put it on, on a link and, and we're on the website. Oh, you want the, the embedded? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. I'll get everything. I thought you might smoke me. Oh, no, it's really nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People call yeah, yeah. They don't know how to click. No, I understand. <laughs> well, I didn't understand, but. Did, did, uh, did it one way? Yeah. 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 I might have to use that because I think I left the clip somewhere. I'm, I'm, I'm doing, I, I gotta get a kit. Put everything in, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm putting things in different places. Yeah. And then I go to get it and I go, okay. So, okay, here's the link. Here's the, oops. Share. Give you the iframe code and then over here. We want to embed it. I'm going to put it. I, I copied it in the, the clip up. Yeah, perfect. And you, you just paste it in there. It's the whole iframe. I think Sister May can give uh, a name one. Uh, oh, no, it's the old one. Oh, but they're, they're kind of soft, so we'll pull it from the middle. Oh, it's it's softer metal. So, do you want to put the code yep. in? Okay. Let's make, let me show you it's in right for you. So it's in the clip off the whole iframe. Okay. I'll get it in this thing, because I think I've exceeded the uh, okay. no, number of modules I can put on here. Oh, right, that's in right. Okay, I can help Jane. Okay, here. Uh, so we're going to put it in the clip off the whole iframe. Okay. Duct tape was exactly what they used. <laughs>
All it needs is a URL. Okay, I'll do the same on the French. Okay. So it's in the clipboard? It's filing well. Yeah, so the, the URL is in the clipboard? Yeah, it still is. Okay. I'm going to go, if you could do that, I'm going to go up and change the. There's somebody upstairs. Uh, the organist was there for me. That's good. Yes.
She has it. You have it. Good. Okay. What happened at the angle of that? Good rates. Uh, oh, see, this morning it was 10 megabits per second. Mm -hmm. Now it's three. <laughs> okay. I didn't do anything different.
I mean, if you want it, you know what it looks like. You know, putting it down. Of course, you're going to see them online. Oh, well, it's always right. That's right. <laughs> That's for sure. That's right. That's for sure.
a lot for me, so you could come up. Sent him to he want he wanted a particular link. He didn't say what he wasn't happy, so <laughs> I can send him the other one too. So all right, so what I need you to do I need you to go tap that link. Tap that um, stand. What do you want? Tap the stand. One more time, Jay. One more time. Hit it more. One more time. There it is. Okay. Okay. So you got audio coming from there. Uh, two up there. Just do be where they step.
So basically, the shooting on the left. Well, not much of No, no, no. Okay. That's the right one. But I think that.
Okay. It's out of focus. Out of focus. Okay. I think it's Okay. Well, it's way out of focus. on your channel? Sorry? Is there another live show on your channel? No. Okay. I'm seeing Deacon John Kennedy. Oh, that doesn't mean... No. <laughs> Shouldn't be. Okay, I follow the link to here. And you started up the spontaneous thing. I'm watching. 
watching it from here. Yeah, I'm using the original format too. So there's four four things.
Verse 2. Verse 2 in English, not verse 1. You don't want me to do the same thing she just did. Verse 2. Or verse 1. Yeah. 
the priests the body of Christ. Don't say anything because they're going to celebrate it. You can give each one of them the body of Christ. Okay. Yep. And uh, so come up to the altar rail. You don't know what we're saying, but they're going to bring it down. And can you grab another Jesuit and stand beside you with the child's presentation? Okay. So grab one of the brothers and they can come. Yes. Can I, can I do that with you? Okay. So I'm going to need one of you. We stand here too. Just going to the next time up there. Stand up to the
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Welcome to this celebration this evening of the Eucharist and Thanksgiving for 25 years of Episcopal service that the Lord was gracious enough to bestow upon me. Merci d'être là ce soir pour cette messe d'action de grâce pour le Seigneur et tous les bienfaits qui sont tenus compte chaque jour et dans ma vie pour 25 ans d'épiscopat. On a chanté au nom de Jésus en anglais. C'est ma devise, in nomine Jésus. Et j'essaie de faire tout mon ministère dans cet esprit. Et c'est notre charge aussi d'être disciples du Seigneur Jésus qui sont missionnaires à part de bonne nouvelle aux autres. God has blessed us with a call to serve his people. My motto is in the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, to be truly for others a witness to the gospel message. Let's take a moment at the beginning of Mass to ask God to pardon our sins and help us enter into these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fall, through my fall, through my most grievous fall. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Seigneur, prends pitié. O Christ, prends pitié. Seigneur, prends pitié. Gloire à Dieu au plus haut des cieux, et Père sur la terre aux hommes qu'il aime. Nous te louons, nous te bénissons, nous t'adorons, nous te glorifions, nous te rendons grâce pour ton immense gloire. Seigneur Dieu, roi du ciel, Dieu le Père tout-puissant, Seigneur, fils unique Jésus-Christ, Seigneur Dieu, agneau de Dieu, le fils du Père, Toi qui enlèves le péché du monde, prends pitié de nous. Toi qui enlèves le péché du monde, reçois notre prière. Toi qui es assis à la droite du Père, prends pitié de nous, car toi seul et seul, c'est le seul Seigneur, toi seul le très haut Jésus-Christ, avec le Saint-Esprit, dans la gloire de Dieu le Père. Amen. Let us pray, prions le Seigneur. Tu as voulu, Seigneur, que la prédication de Saint François Xavier appelle à toi de nombreux peuples d'Orient. Accorde-nous à tous les baptisés le même zèle pour la foi et fais que ton Église se réjouisse d'avoir partout dans le monde de nouveaux enfants. Par Jésus-Christ, ton Fils, notre Seigneur et notre Dieu, qui règne avec toi le Saint-Esprit, maintenant et pour les siècles des siècles. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy, for in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has barred his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord.
Lecture de la première lettre de Saint Paul apôtre aux Corinthiens. Frères, sœurs, annoncer l'Évangile, ce n'est pas là pour moi un motif de fierté. C'est une nécessité qui s'impose à moi. Malheur à moi si je n'annonçais pas l'Évangile. Certes, si je le fais de moi-même, je mérite une récompense. Mais je ne le fais pas de moi-même. C'est une mission qui m'est confiée. Alors, quel est mon mérite? C'est d'annoncer l'Évangile sans rechercher aucun avantage matériel et sans faire valoir mes droits de prédicateur de l'Évangile. Oui, libre à l'égard de tous, je me suis fait l'esclave de tous afin d'en gagner le plus grand nombre possible. Avec les faibles, j'ai été faible pour gagner les faibles. Je me suis fait tous, tout à tous, pour en sauver à tout prix quelques-uns. Et pour cela, je le fais à cause de l'Évangile, pour y avoir part, moi aussi. Parole du Seigneur. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus appeared to the eleven and said to them, Go into the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. The one who believes and is baptized will be saved, but the one who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. By using my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes in their hands. And if they drink, any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then, the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And the eleven went out and proclaimed the good news and everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by the signs that accompanied it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Mes chers frères et sœurs dans le Seigneur, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, 
How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation. These words from the prophet of the Advent season, Isaiah, sums up the feast of St. Francis Xavier, the great missionary whose the memorial we remember today. In his time, he blazed the trail as the apostle St. Paul had 15 centuries earlier in fulfillment of the mission that Jesus gave his disciples and that we heard in today's gospel. He went to all the world and proclaimed the good news to the whole creation. Each one of us has received a similar mission by our baptism into the death and resurrection of Christ. Being graced at that mystical moment by the Heavenly Father with the gift of the Holy Spirit to make possible our fulfillment of the challenge to evangelization in this our day. Unworthy though I am personally of this gift of God, the Father has willed to place me as he had St. Ignatius Loyola and through him his fellow Jesuits at the side of his son to carry out the task of proclaiming God's message of peace for his people. And as Christ goes to fulfill his destiny, he's carrying the cross. We're with him in that. As a bishop, this meant for me to labor first in the Archdiocese of Toronto, mainly in the Western Pastoral Region, next in the Archdiocese of Halifax and the Diocese of Yarmouth, Nova Scotia, and more recently since May 2007 here in Eastern Ontario, first in the Ottawa Archdiocese and then in the Diocese of Alexandria Cornwall, and since May of this year in the amalgamation as the new Archdiocese of Ottawa Cornwall. I want to thank you who have come to join with me in giving thanks to God for the gift of serving this mission as a bishop. Several members representing my family are here. The family has always stood by me in my mission. My brothers of the Ottawa Jesuit community who host me regularly, especially on the Friday night, are also here. As are those who reside at the Archbishop's residence and give me a daily welcome. And those who have collaborated with me at the Diocesan Center over the years, many of whom are working tonight extra hours. And of course, I salute all of you here in the cathedral or watching on live streaming platforms, the religious men and women, the deacons, the priests, and the lay faithful, with whom it has been a joy for me to seek out ways of renewing and preserving the best of our Catholic traditions. And yet we are called in our day to explore how to address the hearts and minds, the souls and bodies of the people of our day with an evangelization that, as Pope John Paul II stressed, is new in its ardor, its methods, and its expression. I have felt from day one, as a bishop, the support of my brother bishops in the Episcopal College, who form a kind of phalanx around me in the sanctuary this evening. Tout d'abord, je tiens à redire combien je suis reconnaissant au soutien de Monsieur Le Luigi Bonassi, avec lequel j'ai eu le privilège de travailler étroitement depuis peu après sa nomination en décembre 2013, ainsi qu'avec son conseiller récemment arrivé, Mons. Rother. Sur la recommandation de la Congrégation des évêques et du nonce, le pape François m'a laissé un cadeau d'adieu pour m'occuper pendant ma retraite, une nomination missionnaire à Hearst Moussouni. Merci, Seigneur. Mes amis disent que c'est une façon d'approprier d'imiter notre Saint du jour, Saint François Xavier, qui a été chargé par son cher ami Ignace d'aller mettre le feu au tout au monde, au tout le monde. Excellence, veuillez transmettre au Saint-Père, au Cardinal Wallet et aux autres personnes qui ont coopéré avec eux pour gouverner l'Église universelle, ma gratitude et mon estime. Mes remerciements s'adressent ensuite aux représentants des évêques du Canada d'Ontario ici présents ce soir. Les archevêques Paul André de Rocher et Christian Lepine, qui servent dans ma province natale du Québec, dans ma ville natale de Montréal. Monseigneur Guy de Rocher, qui a eu, eu le privilège d'ordonner. Monseigneur O'Brien, archevêque émérite de Kingston, un prêtre originaire d'Ottawa, avec qui j'ai eu la joie d'exercer mon ministère d'abord dans le Canada atlantique et ensuite ici en Ontario. 
comment pouvons-nous demander si l'exemple de notre Saint de ce jour peut nous aider à apprécier le défi que nous devons relever aujourd'hui dans la tâche et le défi de l'évangélisation, puisque notre monde et le sien sont très différents. Eh bien, François Xavier a rencontré Inigo de Loyola en 1530 et s'est converti, pourrons dire, à son expérience des exercices spirituels à l'âge de 27 ans. Et tout commence par ce premier nouveau tournant vers le Seigneur, que Saint Paul dit « m'a aimé et a donné sa vie pour moi ». C'est ça le grand mystère que nous rencontrons dans le baptême. Soit-on avec les premiers compagnons d'Ignace de vivre comme prêtre performé au service de l'Église, sa vie est ordonnée à 31 ans et embarqué en 1541 à l'âge de 35 pour l'Inde. Après de pénibles expériences lors du voyage en mer, il y arrive 13 mois plus tard. Suivant dix années d'intenses activités divisées en quelques phases d'organisation et trois missions proprement dites d'une durée d'environ deux ans chacune. L'Inde en 1642-44, les Moluques 45-47, le Japon 49-51. Mais le grand objectif était la Chine, que François n'a pas pu attendre, atteindre, dès qu'il a vu de sa vision. Il mourut dans la solitude la plus totale sur l'île rocheuse de Santian, face à la Chine. Il avait également aspiré en vain à prêcher l'Évangile. On peut dire que cette magnifique épopée a fait de François Xavier un prototype pour nous. Son exemple est toujours d'actualité pour nous, à condition de reconnaître que si François a planté la croix dans une terre lointaine, c'est parce que la croix était déjà plantée d'abord dans son propre cœur. Par la puissance de la résurrection de notre Seigneur, il a dépassé le contexte de sa propre, son propre ordre. Et sa vie est un exemple d'un homme qui s'est abonné à l'esprit. Cela apparaît très clairement dans la lutte intérieure de Xavier, qui est le véritable sens de la nature de l'apostolat, la grande bataille spirituelle. Les barrières entre les civilisations de l'Ouest et l'Est, et pour en dire aussi les mondes sécularisés et numériques parallèles aux différentes cultures asiatiques, ne s'oublieront que lorsqu'elles pourront être affrontées par des individus spirituels dans lesquels la grâce triomphera du péché. Francis had a great triumphant journey, an epic. It turned Francis Xavier into a prototype for us. His example is still relevant for us, provided we recognize that if Francis planted the cross in a far off land, it was because the cross had been planted first in his own heart. By the power of the resurrection of our Lord, he reached beyond the context of his own work. His life exemplifies that of a man who had surrendered to the Spirit. This appears most clearly in Xavier's interior struggle where we see the true meaning and nature of the apostolate. As I read recently in the romantic biography of Francis, Set All Afire, we see that everywhere he went, human anguish pressed upon Xavier, the poor, the blind, the ignorant, the beat downtrodden, those affected by natural disasters, But the love of Christ pressed upon him with equal, even greater force. There were great dangers for one who could not harmonize these two loves. For example, the danger of surrendering oneself to an activity which has no sense of its divine origin. What Pope Francis constantly warns us the church against, acting like an NGO. You see, Francis fought against the fever of the conquistador, which threatens a man's sense of gratitude and with a sense of redemption through the cross that each one of us needs. Xavier's contemporaries often remarked on his nights of silence and of mystical struggle, which were perhaps more charged with meaning than the blazing light of his daytime action. Yes, the true apostle is one who acts in God, and that was clear to Xavier's eyes. 
And his own message is that God acts in the apostle. Where then is the radical freedom in action, the kind of freedom that gives to someone who is attentive to the Spirit's influence the very capacity to discover what each set of circumstances requires of us, what we need to do today. So the journey that we can contemplate in Xavier tonight is not so much the conquest of the world by the apostle as the conquest through that activity of the apostle by God. Behind the man of action, there is the man who knew how to suffer and to sustain divine activity. Une des raisons pour lesquelles l'évangélisation de nos jours a besoin de nouveautés, comme dit Saint Paul, Jean-Paul II, est que le genre de nouvelle évangélisation est principalement constitué de ceux qui ont déjà entendu l'évangile, en quelque sorte. Ceux qui ont grandi en étant catholiques et ont reçu une version de l'évangile et de recouré par la nature séculière ont rejeté ce qu'ils croyaient être le christianisme sans vraiment connaître le contenu de la foi. Le contenu complet de la foi doit être présenté dans une nouvelle expression pour éviter la défense. J'ai déjà entendu ça. Je dois également être présenté avec de nouvelles méthodes car ceux qui ont besoin d'évangélisation ne se présentaient pas pour les anciennes pratiques et méthodes des missions paroissiales et des retours du dimanche. Elle doit être présentée avec une nouvelle ardeur, car la fervente authenticité du messager est essentielle pour communiquer la bonne nouvelle de manière convaincante. Vous avez peut-être remarqué plutôt qu'il y avait un archevêque non mentionné, le coach de Marcel Danfousse, qui deviendra bientôt le deuxième archevêque d'Ottawa Cornwall. Je voulais l'inclure dans l'équipe du Centre des Saints, qui s'installera bientôt de l'autre côté de la place Kilbourne, dans l'église de Saint Thomas d'Aquin. Je crois que le Seigneur l'a choisi pour se voir la raison de son engagement dans la nouvelle évangélisation et de ses autres dons. Lors des messes quotidiennes dans la chapelle de résidence de l'archevêque, il présente de riches réflexions sur les Écritures du jour et sur notre vie à cette époque et dans ces circonstances. C'est un homme aussi d'équipe, organisé et déterminé. Je suis convaincu que son leadership sera une véritable bénédiction pour nous tous et toutes. Perhaps you noted that earlier on, when I was mentioning the various bishops in the sanctuary, I skipped over Bishop Danfous, the coadjutor, who will soon become the second Archbishop of Ottawa Cornwall. You see, I wanted to include him with the team at the Austin Center that will soon move across the street to the place to the Church of St. Thomas de Caen. I truly believe the Lord has chosen him for this role because of his commitment to the new evangelization and as well as his other gifts. In the daily Mass in the chapel of the Archbishop's residence, he presents rich reflections on the scriptures of the day and of our life in this age and these circumstances. He's a team man, organized and determined, I'm convinced his leadership will be a real blessing to us all. The theme of spiritual gifts, of course, underlines for us once again the universal call to holiness of all God's people. Last week, we held a Mass of thanksgiving to God for the gifts and graces received as we celebrate the last Mass since 1957 in the Chapel of our Diocesan Center on Kilbourne. Our staff, you probably can tell already, is made up of qualified and committed people who strive with all their talents to serve the parishes and to serve the mission of Christ and his church. I told them then, and I repeat it gladly tonight, that every gift of the workplace that they show is important for the church's mission, from the maintenance crew to the voice on the phone at reception, to pastoral services in the curia, to the safe environment team, to the office of finance and counting, to the tribunal and the chancery, and anyone else I've forgotten. You are all important at this service of God's people in Ottawa, Cornwall. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And as Paul puts it in Philippians, I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. In closing this reflection and theme of thanksgiving for grace is given and to come, I express my gratitude to all of you I ask pardon for any way in which I deliberately or inadvertently may have harmed anyone. 
and the mission of the church. I promise to keep you always in my heart and in my prayer. Please pray for me. Pour conclure cette réflexion et ce thème d'action de grâce pour les grâces données et à venir, je vous exprime toute ma gratitude. Je vous demande pardon pour toute manière dont j'ai pu, délivrement ou par inadvertance, nuire à quelqu'un et la mission de l'Église, et je promets vous garder toujours dans mon cœur en prière. Je vous prie de prier pour moi aussi. Que Dieu nous bénisse, vous bénisse, tous et toutes. Amen. Gathered together in Christ as brothers and sisters, let us call to mind God's many blessings and ask him to hear the prayers which he himself inspires us to ask. For the Pope François, for Monseigneur Terence, who celebrates his 25 years of episcopat, pour tous les évêques, les prêtres et les diacres, et pour l'ensemble du peuple de Dieu, prions le Seigneur. Seigneur, nous te prions. For the leaders of the world, may they be sensitive to the needs of the less fortunate, and may they become servants of justice and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pour nos frères et sœurs qui sont morts, pour toutes les personnes éprouvées par la pandémie du COVID-19, pour les soignants qui se font le prochain des malades, pour les familles éprouvées en raison du confinement, que tous aient la consolation de trouver auprès de toi la grâce qui leur donne vie et confiance. Prions le Seigneur. Seigneur, nous te prions. For all of us, that we may be united in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in charity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pour que notre relation personnelle à Jésus-Christ soit nourrie de la parole de Dieu et par une vie de prière, prions le Seigneur. Seigneur, nous te prions. Dieu notre Père, tu connais mieux que nous-mêmes ce dont nous avons besoin. Dis-nous ce que tu veux que nous fassions pour que se réalisent les desseins que tu nourris pour notre monde et notre Église. Nous te demandons par ton Fils Jésus-Christ, notre Seigneur. Amen.
Samen met mij de vele zaken feesten tot ik deze. Receive, O oh Lord, these offerings we bring in commemoration of St. Francis Xavier, and grant that as he journeyed to distant lands out of longing for the salvation of souls, so we too, bearing effective witness to the gospel, may with our brothers and sisters eagerly hasten toward you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you called St. Francis, a son of the Emerging Society of Jesus, and set his heart on fire with love for you and zeal for souls, so that heedless of danger, hardship, and labor, he would undertake countless journeys, would proclaim the gospel to many peoples, and by imitating them into the, initiating them into the saving mysteries, would join them to your people through Christ the Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, o Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. Que l'Esprit Saint fasse à nous une éternelle offrande de ta gloire pour que nous obtiendrons un jour les biens du monde à venir auprès de la Vierge Marie de Bénéos Mère de Dieu, avec Saint Joseph son époux, avec les apôtres et martyrs, Saint François Xavier, 
et tous les saints et saintes qui ne cessent d'intercéder pour nous. Et maintenant, nous te supplions, Seigneur, par le sacrifice qui nous réconcilie avec toi, et tends au monde entier le salut et la paix. Affamie la foi et la charité de ton Église au nom de ton chemin sur la terre. Veille sur le serviteur de Pape François, sur moi-même ton humble serviteur, mon archevêque Wojtaï Marcel, l'ensemble des évêques, les prêtres, les diacres et tout le peuple des grâches Écoute la prière de ta famille assemblée devant toi, remène à toi, Père très aimant, tous tes enfants dispersés. Pour nos frères défunts, pour les personnes qui ont quitté ce monde et dont tu connais de retour, nous te prions. Reste-toi dans ton royaume, nous espérons te combler de ta gloire tous ensemble et pour l'éternité. Par le Christ notre Seigneur, par qui tu donnes au monde toute grâce et tout bien. Par lui, avec lui et en lui, à toi, Dieu le Père Tout-Puissant, dans l'unité du Saint-Esprit, tout honneur et toute gloire pour les siècles des siècles. Amen. Nous avons une version du Notre Père en latin. We have a version of the Our Father in Latin, so you can find it in your booklets if you don't know it. Prions ensemble, let us pray. Pater Noster, qui es in celis, sanctificator nomen tuum, advenia regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicur in cielo et in terra, panam nostrum quotidianum da nobis hodie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicur et nos dimitibus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, se libra nos amalo. Délivre-nous de tout mal, Seigneur, et donne la paix à notre temps. Par ta miséricorde, libère-nous du péché. Rassure-nous devant les épreuves en cette vie. Nous espérons le bonheur que tu promets. Devant les mains de Jésus-Christ, notre Sauveur. Car c'est à toi qu'appartiennent le règne, la puissance et la gloire pour les siècles des siècles. Amen. Seigneur Jésus-Christ, <coughs> Seigneur Jésus-Christ, tu as dit à tes apôtres, je vous laisse ta paix, je vous donne ma paix. Ne regarde pas nos péchés, mais la foi de ton Église. Pour que ta volonté s'accomplisse, donne-lui toujours cette paix et conduis la vérité parfaite, toi qui règne pour les siècles des siècles. Que la paix du Seigneur soit toujours avec vous. Et changeons un signe de la paix. Agneau de Dieu qui enlève le péché du monde, prends pitié de nous. Agneau de Dieu qui enlève le péché du monde, prends pitié de nous. Agneau de Dieu qui enlève le péché du monde, donne-nous la paix. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Seigneur, let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, who by your blood have purchased us for God from every tribe and tongue, from every people and nation, we humbly pray on this feast of St. Francis that all be gathered together at the great banquet in your Father's kingdom, the kingdom prepared from the foundation of the world, where you live and reign forever and ever. Dear brothers and bishops, chers frères dans le sacerdoce, le diacre permanent, dear religious sisters, chers frères et sœurs, dear brothers and sisters, as the Holy Father's representative in Canada, I am pleased to share with you some heartfelt few words at the end of this beautiful, emotional celebration. We have all come to honor the 25th anniversary of the Episcopal ordination of Archbishop Prendergast, which took place on April 25th, 1995, and also to celebrate the Episcopal ministry of Archbishop Terry to the faithful of this archdiocese. I would like to begin with a personal note. From my first days as nuncio in Ottawa, Archbishop Terry has welcomed me as a brother, not only in his cathedral church, but also at his table which he has shared with so many during the 13 years as Archbishop. He has also shared with me his wisdom and insights about the Church in Canada, gained by his years of ministry in other places of this vast land and in dialogue with his Brothers bishops, thank you very much, Archbishop Terry. C'est bien approprié que notre célébration ait lieu le jour de la mémoire de Saint François Xavier, ce remarquable jésuite missionnaire des premières années de la Compagnie de Jésus. Monseigneur Prendergast, dans son ministère, vous avez apporté cet esprit missionnaire jésuite à votre travail. Fidèle au charisme et fondateur de Saint-Ignace de Loyola, vous avez accepté volontiers les demandes de son père qui vous a appelé à des travaux supplémentaires en dehors de votre propre diocèse. Et comme vous-même vous l'avez dit, et nous venons de l'écouter, juste il y a quelques jours, Monseigneur Prendergast a généreusement accepté la nomination du Saint-Père en tant qu'administrateur provisoire du diocèse de Hust moussoni De sorte que sa retraite, au moins au début, ne sera pas une retraite d'inaction mais du service et du ministère épiscopal qui, qui continue. As for your ministry here in Ottawa, which now extends to the new Archdiocese of Ottawa Cornwall, you took it as a guiding principle that a bishop should be among his people. Pope Francis speaks of a bishop as a pastor who must have the odor of sheep. Your faithful 
Essi dat in your time as ministry, present to your parish community by pastoral visits and the celebration of the sacrament of confirmation, dialogue with Catholic educators, visiting nursing homes, places, places of employment, agricultural employees and more. And engagement with Catholic seeking to deepen the relationship with Jesus Christ and the practice of the Catholic faith. As a bishop, you have not forgotten that you are a religious. Your nearness to religious communities of consecrating men and women has been, an harm, has been a hallmark of your time in Ottawa, but also before. I note, in particular, your support to the Sister of Charity in their varied apostolates and in the promotion of the cause of their foundress, the Venerable Elisabeth Bruyere. And keenly aware of the, of the importance of consecrated life for the good of the Church, your patern with your paternal care, you have promoted and supported the foundations of consecrated life, new, of new foundation for, of consecrated life for men and women. They are here with us tonight. Votre ministère a également été marqué par la lecture des signes du temps. À cela, vous vous êtes manifesté non seulement un collaborateur, mais un ami de nouvelles communautés et mouvements qui cherchent à inspirer dans les fidèles laïcs un esprit missionnaire d'annoncer l'Évangile et de, 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 et de témoigner au monde la bonne nouvelle de notre foi catholique. Your ministry has also been influenced by reading the sign of the time. In that, you have found yourself to be not only a collaborator, but a friend of new communities and movements which seek to inspire the lay faithful in a missionary way of proclaiming the gospel convincing others gently of the good news of our Catholic faith. These words are offered with a sense of gratitude and also with a heartfelt wish. May the coming years, when we will be freed from the demands and contaminants of the diocesan office be ones where your gift will be offered in a new and fruitful way for the good of all the faithful. And finally, in the name of the Holy Father, Pope Francis, many, many thanks, dear Archbishop Prendergast. And may the Lord, and may the good Lord continue to bless you. Excellences, mes confrères, consoeurs, mesdames, messieurs, vous tous êtes réunis ici ce soir. Bonsoir. En cette euh, célébration d'action de grâce pour votre jubilé d'argent d'épiscopat, il me fait plaisir, au nom des membres du clergé, de la communauté, de l'archidiocèse et de tous ceux et celles présents, 
ici ce soir pour vous offrir nos meilleurs voeux. Lorsque nous chantons le psaume 138, nous chantons « Je te rends grâce, ô oh mon Dieu, pour tant de merveilles. » Ce soir, nous disons « Nous te rendons grâce, Seigneur, pour cet homme. » Ce parcours extraordinaire, cette mission, ce missionnaire, non seulement comme religieux, jésuite, mais comme prêtre, comme évêque, comme archevêque, mais surtout comme celui que nous avons côtoyé comme étant à la fois pasteur, berger et aussi un ami, un père pour plusieurs. Le Seigneur avait dessiné tout un plan pour vous qu'il ne vous avait probablement pas divulgué au moment de votre entrée au noviciat des Jésuites en 1931. Ce plan a davantage pris forme au moment de votre ordination presbytérale en 72. Se sont donc succédés plein de chemins missionnaires au cours de votre vie sacerdotale qui se poursuit. Il y en aurait beaucoup à partager, mais juste soulever quelques-uns pour citer, comme par exemple l'enseignement Halifax, recteur du collège Regis à Toronto, euh, puis doyen de la faculté de théologie, secrétaire exécutif de la visite épiscopale mandatée par le Vatican dans les séminaires anglophones, et j'en passe, et j'en passe, et j'en passe, combien d'étapes de vos missions franchies. Pour arriver d'abord à la nomination d'évêque titulaire de Sleb, évêque auxiliaire de Toronto en 1995, membre entre autres du comité Vox Clara pendant 16 ans. Et les missions se cumulent de plus en plus. Pour ceux et celles qu'ils désirent, après la célébration, il y aura ce qu'il y a d'eau offert, un livret avec euh, une bibliographie plus intense plus intensive, si on veut, qui sera offert par le personnel du sens de ces ans, ici à l'avant, après la célébration. Excellence, je ne peux quand même pas passer sous silence l'importance que vous avez attribuée aux plus démunis, les organismes qui avaient besoin de support financier, qui avaient besoin d'écoute, d'encouragement. Vous avez ainsi toujours démontré une très grande affection pour les peuples des Premières Nations et plus spécialement soutenu la mission du groupe Catherine Native Ministry. Et moi-même étant des Premières Nations, j'en suis très touché. Un fin chroniqueur, un homme à l'affût de tout ce qui pourrait s'appeler médias sociaux, Blog, texto, Facebook, YouTube, nommez-le, il est là. Mais attention, vous risquez aussi de vous trouver sur une de ces photos, ayant toujours la caméra à la portée de la main. Revenons à quelques nominations d'envergure et soulignons un peu plus la nomination suivante, soit celle comme devenant le 11e archevêque d'Halifax, 98. Et vous y êtes demeuré, 9 ans si je m'abuse. Pour être ensuite arrivé au Pays des Merveilles, la capitale nationale, comme neuvième archevêque de l'archidiocèse d'Ottawa en 2007. Voilà que nous arrivons ensuite en 2018 et sa sainteté vous confie en surplus le diocèse d'Alexandria Cornwall. Et c'est ainsi que l'amalgamation des deux diocèses, vous devenez donc le dernier archevêque de l'archidiocèse d'Ottawa et le premier archevêque d'Ottawa Cornwall. Dès lors, un troisième pallium vous a été remis par Son Excellence Luigi Bonatti. Tout un planificateur, ce Dieu qui nous appelle à la mission, sans toutefois nous révéler ses projets qu'il nous réserve. Et vous qui pensiez vous consacrer peut-être davantage à l'écriture et peut-être quelques voyages et un peu de temps de repos au moment de prendre votre retraite. Voilà qu'en plus, il vous joue un autre tour 
que Dieu dont nous aimons tant, en vous confiant une autre mission, celle d'administrateur à Hearst Mussolini. Un prêtre se doit d'être au service et c'est Marc qui nous le rappelle. D'ailleurs, dans ses évangiles, saint Marc nous parle souvent du serviteur parfait. Je crois pouvoir dire que vous avez, vous avez été et êtes toujours un excellent serviteur. Vous le démontrez encore en acceptant de poursuivre cette mission qui vient tout juste de vous être confiée. Je pense que nous pouvons simplement rendre grâce à Dieu de vous avoir mis sur notre chemin et vous dire du fond du cœur un grand merci pour l'accomplissement de votre Nous vous offrons nos meilleurs voeux pour la suite et que le Seigneur vous accompagne. Your Grace, it is a privilege for me today as a priest of the former Diocese of Alexandria Cornwall to extend to you our best wishes as you celebrate the 25th anniversary of your Episcopal ordination. In January of 2016, the Church of Alexandria Cornwall found ourselves like sheep without a shepherd. Our bishop, Marcel Danfous, had been asked to take charge of the Sioux. Shortly thereafter, on the day of his installation, the Holy Father appointed you to become the apostolic administrator of our diocese. We have had administrators before, and administrators before were simply there to take charge until a new bishop could be named. But when you were named as administrator, you were given an important task. Your task was to get to know in a short period of time, not only the geographic layout of our diocese, but to know our priests, to know our deacons and our faithful. The time had come after many years of discussion to seriously investigate whether it was time to amalgamate the Diocese of Alexandria Cornwall with the Archdiocese of Ottawa. You took the task on bravely. You came and you lived amongst us. You visited us on a regular basis. You got to know all of the priests, not simply those who were involved in parishes, but you took time to go to the retirement homes and the nursing homes to visit the priests who had served our diocese faithfully for so many years. You wanted them and their advice as you traveled ahead on your task of looking into what would be our future. Bravely, after visiting with so many people and going to so many parish suppers, you went to all the organizations that invited you and you were almost like a new bishop who took on the role, except every invitation the first year, and you did. But then the time came for to do serious study and about what should be done. And you bravely asked for town meetings to be held in different parishes throughout the diocese in which you could listen to the words of the people. Sometimes these words were encouraging and sometimes they were not. Sometimes it was opposition because, as Bishop Paul Andre has often said, the only person who likes change is a baby with a dirty diaper. <laughs> and we were facing change. We were a diocese of a great history, one of the oldest in the province of Ontario. We were proud of our traditions, of our cultures, and we found it very difficult to be able to say it is time.
but you helped us and you worked us through that. Your report was sent finally to Rome and in April of 2018, the Holy See named you as the last Bishop of the Diocese of Alexandria Cornwall. We were joined in an engagement, if you will. We were engaged to the Archdiocese of Ottawa. We were not yet married. We were just going to see if we really liked one another. <laughs> and so for the next two years, we would work together to try to see if we could form a lasting union. In May of this year, 2020, you became the first Archbishop of the Diocese of Alexandria Cornwall and Ottawa, which became the new Archdiocese of Ottawa Cornwall. The time, the effort that you put in will always be appreciated because it was a sign of your determination. As an observer, you did not take it as an academic project, but you recognize the human nature of each one of us, and you listened to us, and you helped us so that we could embrace change with a hope for the future. As you approached retirement, all of a sudden we heard news on Monday that the Holy Father has another job for you. And I was beginning to wonder if there's a pattern here. <laughs> Halifax became Halifax Yarmouth. Ottawa became Ottawa Cornwall. Hearst and Moosonee. Kingston better be careful. On behalf of our clergy, we would like to thank you for your service to us, for your prayers and your support, and we would like you to know that you will always have a place for us as our first Archbishop of the Diocese. After the service today, there will be booklets available at the front of the church as you're exiting the church and a souvenir of today's celebration. I would ask you to pick one of them up because that will tell you more about his biography. I didn't want to go into his biography too much because when you stop to realize, born in Montreal, a bishop in Toronto, a bishop in Halifax, a bishop in Ottawa, people might wonder in our diocese if a priest was changed that often, I wonder why. <laughs> so you can look at the biography and make your own decisions. Thank you. My heart is overflowing with joy and thanksgiving for your presence here and the kind words that you shared. Merci beaucoup pour tout ce que vous avez fait pour moi et gardez-moi dans vos prières comme je vous garde dans mes mains. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, our Father, who has gathered us together to celebrate the feast day of St. Francis, sanctify and protect you and confirm you in his peace. May Christ the Lord, who in St. Francis revealed the renewing powers of Easter, make you authentic witnesses of his gospel. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who in St. Francis gave a sign of fraternal charity, make you artisans of full communion in the church. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you, remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Nous rendons grâce à Dieu.